The oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is a graph that describes the ability of hemoglobin to actually bind to oxygen at specific partial pressure values. Now, it turns out that the ability of hemoglobin to bind to oxygen is affected by several important factors, and one of these factors is the pH of our blood. So, when the pH of our blood changes, the hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen also changes, and this ultimately changes the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. And this effect, as we'll see in just a moment, is known as the Bohr effect, which was named after the scientist who essentially described it, Christian Bohr. Now, let's begin by discussing what actually affects the pH of our blood plasma. Well, recall that inside our cells of our tissues, the cells undergo many types of metabolic processes, for example, cellular respiration. And when cells undergo these processes, the major byproduct, waste byproduct that is produced is carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is, of course, nonpolar, and that's because carbon dioxide consists of two polar bonds that point in opposite directions, and so because the dipole moments cancel out, the carbon dioxide has a net dipole moment of zero, and so that's why it is a nonpolar molecule. Now, because carbon dioxide is nonpolar, and because our blood plasma consists mostly of water, a polar molecule, that implies that carbon dioxide will not actually dissolve in our blood plasma very easily. So, how exactly do we solve this problem? Well, the way that our body solves this problem is by transforming the carbon dioxide into a slightly different form to make it more soluble in our blood plasma. So, when the cells of our tissue are exercising, they're producing a bunch of CO2 gas molecules, and those CO2 gas molecules dissolve or diffuse across the cell membrane and enter the extracellular matrix and then the CO2 is moved across the capillary walls, it diffuses across the capillary wall, uh, walls and enters the red blood cells found inside the blood plasma of our capillaries. And once inside the red blood cells, inside the red blood cells we have a special type of catalytic enzyme known as our carbonic anhydrase. And what carbonic anhydrase does is it combines a single water molecule with a single carbon dioxide gas molecule to produce H2CO3 in the aqueous state. And this is our carbonic acid. Now, because carbonic acid is a weak acid, it will dissociate into these two ions, into an H plus ion and into bicarbonate. And because these two ions have a charge, they will be soluble in our water, in our blood plasma. And so we see that inside our body, we actually store carbon dioxide in the form of this equation because these are essentially uh, soluble in our water while carbon dioxide is not. So once again, exercising tissue has a high rate of metabolism and therefore produces a large number of carbon dioxide waste byproducts. These carbon dioxide, because they are not soluble in our blood plasma, are ultimately moved into the red blood cells where we use carbonic anhydrase to transform the carbon dioxide into H plus ions and bicarbonate ions, which are soluble in our blood plasma. Now, recall from basic chemistry that what determines the pH of anything of our blood plasma in this case is the concentration of H plus ions, of hydrogen ions, inside our blood plasma. So, the more carbon dioxide molecules we have inside the blood plasma, the more of these H plus ions we will have inside our blood plasma. So, when the tissue is exercising, it produces more CO2 molecules, which ultimately ends up with 
produces more H plus ions and because we have a higher concentration of H plus ions that will make our blood plasma more acidic thereby lowering the pH of the blood plasma and this effect is known as the Bohr effect so it basically affects our hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen. The next question is, how exactly does the presence of carbon dioxide and H plus ions affect hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen? Well, basically hemoglobin has a special site we call the allosteric site. And these H plus ions and CO2 ions can actually bind to the allosteric site found on hemoglobin. And once they bind, they create a conformational change, a change change in the three-dimensional structure of hemoglobin and what this does is it decreases the ability of hemoglobin to actually bind to oxygen and by decreasing our hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen we ultimately shift the entire oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right as seen in the following diagram and this is known as the Bohr effect. So by increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide, we ultimately increase the concentration of H plus ions and that makes our blood more acidic so we decrease our pH and this causes a decrease in our hemoglobin's ability to bind to oxygen thereby shifting the entire curve to the right side with respect to the original curve shown in blue. So the blue curve is the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve when the pH is 7.4 so when our tissue is not exercising but if the tissue begins to exercise that means we produce more H plus ions and that shifts the entire curve to the right so the red curve which describes a pH of let's say 7.2 so slightly lower is shifted to the right side with respect to our blue curve and this is what we call the Bohr effect. So let's take a look at the following curve at the following diagram and describe exactly how our uh, hemoglobin's ability to oxygen actually decreases. So let's begin with number one. So recall that on average, the partial pressure of oxygen inside our tissues is around 40 millimeters of mercury. So the y-axis is the percent saturation of hemoglobin. It's the percent of hemoglobin that is fully saturated with our oxygen. So we range from 0% to 100%. Now the x-axis is the partial pressure of oxygen in our surrounding tissue. And this is given in millimeters of mercury. So the range begins at zero to about 100 millimeters of mercury. So recall that at 100 millimeters of mercury, we are in our lungs and at 40, we are in our tissue. So notice what these two curves actually tell us. At about our 40 millimeters of mercury partial pressure, which is the partial pressure of oxygen inside our tissues, the value for how much of hemoglobin is actually saturated differs for these two pHs. At a pH of 7.4, it's around 70% saturation. And at a pH of 7.2, uh, 7 it's around 60% saturation of hemoglobin. So there is this difference of about 10%. And what that tells us is when our cells of the tissue are exercising and therefore producing more H plus ions and so we have a lower pH, what the lower pH means is our hemoglobin will be more likely to actually unload that oxygen into those exercising cells inside our tissue. 
So the average partial pressure of oxygen in our tissues is around 40 millimeters of mercury. Now at lower pH values, when the cells of our tissue are exercising, we shift the curve to the right and this means we make the hemoglobin much more likely to actually dissociate and unload that oxygen into the exercising tissue. So this in turn will deliver more oxygen to those tissues because those cells of the exercise tissue will need more oxygen to produce more ATP in the process of cellular respiration. So even from this curve, we see that at a pH of 7.4 on the blue curve, we see that at a 40 mmHg partial pressure, we have a 70% saturation of hemoglobin, but at the same exact partial pressure inside our exercising muscles, inside our exercising tissue at a pH of 7.2, we have a lower percent saturation means more of the hemoglobin have unloaded that oxygen. So about 40% of the hemoglobin actually exists in its dissociated form because all that oxygen has been unloaded. And this is important because we want to ensure that the cells in our body that have a higher rate of metabolism receive that oxygen that is needed to produce ATP for the cell to actually function correctly and efficiently. Now from this graph we also see another important point. Notice that at a partial pressure of about 100 millimeters of mercury which is the partial pressure inside the alveoli of our lungs our percent saturation of hemoglobin for both curves at both pH values is approximately the same. And this is an important point because even if our cells of the body are exercising, we don't want that to actually affect hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen inside our lungs because we want to basically make sure that the hemoglobin inside the lungs continually accepts those oxygen molecules and brings those oxygen molecules to the exercising tissue. So notice that a change in pH does not really affect the affinity of hemoglobin at high, uh, at high partial pressure values. So physiologically, this is beneficial because we do not want hemoglobin to bind less oxygen in our lungs. We see that both curves, the blue curve and the red curve show that at a partial pressure of 100 millimeters of mercury, the percent of hemoglobin that is fully saturated with oxygen is about 98%. So even though the pH decreases when our cells are exercising and producing more carbon dioxide, our hemoglobin binds the same exact percentage of oxygen inside our lungs but uh, once, the, uh, once the hemoglobin actually uh, brings that oxygen into the exercising tissue, this is where we see the boar effect really take its uh, place. So we basically see a difference in about 10% of unloading in our, in our tissue when we have a partial pressure of about 40 millimeters of mercury.